Good morning, church, and we want to welcome you back once again to the Sunday School Services for the House of Prayer Worship Center, and say we appreciate you joining in, and again, we appreciate you for coming out for the church services that we've been having, for each one's been able to, to attend those services. We know that there's some that's not been able to attend, and we do want you to remember those in prayer, but... Uh, this morning, if you join in with us, we would like to take a few minutes here and look into the 11th chapter of the book of St. John. If you have your Bibles and would like to turn and join with us as we read from the Word of God. And we do want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, though, and give praise most of all unto God for all that He's done for us and for the blessings that He gives, but we pray today that uh, God would just continue to move in the way that he has been moving and pray that we might see souls be saved in our church. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. If you would join us this time, we thank you, Father, today, God, for the blessings you give to us. We thank you, Lord, for the free gift of God for salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask of you today that you would move and meet the needs for the people we ask of you that, God, that you would bless them with sick and afflicted today, that you would give health unto them. We pray, Lord, for those that's not able to get out and go to church, that, God, this might be a special blessing to them today. We ask of you that, Lord, you would bless the preaching service this day as Brother Jimmy would stand, bring forth the Word of God today before the congregation, that you would deal with hearts, Lord, that souls would be saved there in our church. We pray that the church might prosper and grow as it would please you, Lord. And we pray, God, that you would guide us through this Sunday morning. Lord, as we would endeavor to teach from the Word of God, that you would open our hearts and our minds to the understanding of the Word of God and help us to receive the Word that way that you would give it unto us. And God, we just give you praise for everything. We ask us all in Christ's name. Amen. Church, again, we thank you for coming in to into the service with us by the way of the YouTube today. Uh, not at home today. I would like to ask you to remember our wife in prayer. We're actually uh, right now down in Nashville. We brought her Gilda back down to uh, Vanderbilt for the doctor's appointment that she has tomorrow and we do pray that you bless her, her with your prayers that the doctors might be able to find out what's going on with her and as God would give them the wisdom to be able to treat her amen that, that we might see her overcome this sickness but we know that through it all it takes God for the healing so we pray for that today but if you got your Bibles again, we want to look into the 11th chapter of the book of St. John. A very familiar message here, very familiar chapter in scriptures that we would be reading from. That this message has been taught on, been preached on. Amen. Many times, I'm sure. But, you know, the Word of God, it never gets old, does it? You know, every time we read it, it seems like there's something new, something fresh, or it is to me, and I hope it is that way to you too. Amen. That's why, you know, sometimes I enjoy getting into the Word of God and, and something I've read over and over and over. And, you know, we pray and ask God sometimes what He would have us to speak on or what He'd have us to teach on. And it seems like He'll lead us to a, a scripture, and I'm sure it's the same way with Brother Jimmy and Brother Tony. Uh, Brother Will, Brother Randy, all preachers today, you know, that will ask God where He wants to go, and it seems like sometimes it's right back to where we've already been. You know, and we sometimes, you know, I, I'll sort of question, but God, you know, we were just there not long ago. But then as we get into the Word of God, it seems like we find something new in it. Amen? And so um, I appreciate the Lord for opening our mind of, of understanding, our eyes of the understanding of the Word of God. And um, here in the eleventh chapter of the book of Saint John, it said that it starts out. It said, "Now there was a certain man was sick in the town of Mary and her sister Martha. A certain man wasn't just anybody in the town that was sick. 
I mean, it wasn't just anybody really right now that Jesus was concerned about. It said it was a certain man. Not because Jesus, as we read on down here, loved this man, but it was a man that was in need. And you know, whenever we are in need and we come to the Lord, it's very important to Him. But He wants us to bring our troubles to Him. He wants us to bring our problems to Him, to bring our trials to Him. He want, you know, he, he said, casting all of your cares upon him because he cares for us. And he said, here he said that, that this, this certain man, the, the brother of Mary and the brother of Martha, that was very important to Jesus, very, very dear to Jesus Christ. And their brother was sick. Oh, you know, I'm sure Lazarus, as we find out it is here, you know, had probably sat and talked with Jesus time after time. He had probably heard Jesus teach. He had probably seen the miracles that Jesus did. And here all of a sudden he became sick. Now, I said all of a sudden, I don't know if his sickness came upon him just real quick or if it had been something that had been ongoing with him. I don't know. It doesn't really tell us that. But it said that he was sick. It said it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now as Mary, you know, went beyond, I'm going to say, whenever she bent down in front of Jesus Christ, humbled herself there and began to weep and to cry, because of the love that she had for Jesus. And it said that she took the hair of her head and dried his feet with her hair. You think, boy, that'd make Mary be really important to Jesus Christ. But you know what? She wasn't no important to him than what me and you were. Amen. We are just every bit as important to Jesus Christ as what Mary was. We are as important to Jesus, amen, as what Martha was. We are as important to Jesus today as what Lazarus was. You know, I believe whenever it comes to Christ, there's no respecter of persons with Him. Now, as children of God, I believe we hold a special place in His sight. But still... God loves one just as much as he does the other. Amen. And it said that his sisters sent unto Jesus. And in that third verse, it said, Lord, he, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. What they were saying is, we know that you love Lazarus. And Lord, you know what? Lazarus is sick. And we need your help. We need you to come. We need you, we need you to heal him. You know, we've all got some problems in our life. Sometimes we, we like, to, you know, as Christians, sometimes people think, well, we're, we're perfect. I don't have no problems. You know, I've not met a Christian without problems. You know, I've got many, I've had problems in my life, and as long as I'm here on this earth, we'll continue to have problems. You know, as long as you're on this earth, you're going to continue to have problems. But they sent for Jesus. Amen. And they said, we know you love Lazarus. We know Lazarus is dear to you. We know Lazarus is important to you. But they said, he's sick now, Lord. And, you know, it said that they came, that their Lazarus was a Bethany, which Bethany, you know, if you look it up, that one of the definitions is uh, God, God is my help. You know, and truly, God is our help. They, Mary and Martha knew where to send to get the help they needed. Amen. They knew that if they was going to get any healing for Lazarus, that they, they knew that they was going to have to call upon Jesus Christ. And it said, they told him, they said, Lazarus is sick, Lord. They expected Jesus just to jump up. They expected him to quit doing everything else. They expected him to turn away from the, from the multitudes. They expected him to tell the disciples, you know, I've got to go. That's how important they, they knew that Lazarus was to Jesus. But when they came to him and they told him, they said, Lazarus is sick. They knew that Lazarus was at a point that he was probably going to die if Jesus didn't come and do something. But 
it tells us there whenever they told him that that Jesus yeah he he was very concerned about it amen I believe he was very concerned that it said he stayed there at Bethany you know uh, where he was at rather before he came to Bethany he stayed there two more days he tarried no doubt he taught no doubt he may he probably done some other miracles right there where he was at he probably healed some other people who were sick. I don't know. It don't tell me that. But I'm just sort of envisioning here because wherever Jesus went, he done miracles. Wherever he went, you know, he, he taught the Word of God. Wherever he went, he told people about the kingdom of heaven. And so he stayed there for two days, and then he told the disciples that was with him. He said, it's time for us to go now. <coughs> he, said, he said, it's time for us to go down to where Lazarus is at. Because he said, Lazarus sleepeth. Ha! <laughs> they said, well, if he's sleeping, Lord, he's doing good, isn't he? You know, whenever we get sick, people tell us, well, you know, go to bed and get you some rest. That's the best thing for you, get you some rest. But they said, you know, said, if he's sleeping, he's doing well. Jesus said, you don't understand. He said, Lazarus is dead. Mm, if somebody had been dead for a couple of days, most of us not going to want to go around them. Most, you know, if somebody had been dead for a couple of days, most of us going to say, well, there ain't no need to go now. No need to call for a doctor now. <coughs> Excuse me. No need, no need for the physician to come now. He's already dead. Jesus told him, said, Lazarus is already dead, but he said, let's go. And when it got down to where that Mary and Martha was at and Martha came out, she told Jesus, she said, Lord, she said, if you'd have been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. My brother would still be alive, Lord, if you would have just been here, if you would have just come. Jesus said, Martha, do you believe Lazarus will live again? Oh, yeah, Lord. She, she said, I believe in the resurrection of the last day. He said, he'll live. Jesus said, Martha, I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. He said, whoever lives and believes in me, he said, they'll never die. So that's why Jesus was telling the disciples there, Lazarus was asleep. When we trust in the Lord, we close our eyes, we just go to sleep in the Lord. You know, you read on just a little bit farther down, <coughs> that was in the 21st verse there that Jesus told Martha, you know, whenever they was talking, and Martha said, if you'd been here, said, my brother wouldn't have died. And then I want us to look on over then, just a little bit further down, in verse 32, Martha's already come to Jesus. He's, Jesus has already explained to Martha. Now, verse 32, John chapter 11, verse 32, after all was said and done, here comes Mary. Mary, very important to Jesus. Mary trusted Jesus. Mary loved Jesus. Jesus loved Mary. <coughs> and she comes to him here. And it said, verse 32 said, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Why didn't you come, Lord? Why, why did you tarry? We sent for you. We believed you. We, we trusted you was going to be here. Lord, why didn't you show up? Why didn't you come and heal him, Lord? If you would have just been here, he'd still be alive. Said Jesus, therefore, said in verse 33, said when Jesus therefore saw her weeping. You see, Mary, Mary was very upset because Lazarus had died. Whenever we have a loved one died, we, we get upset, don't we? We weep. We weep whenever someone dies because usually, especially if it's a family member like that, when they die, there's a part of us it seems like dies with them. And it said that Jesus saw Mary and said she was weeping. And the Jews that came with her, her, her friends, her loved ones that was with her, they was weeping also. They were weeping, some no doubt, because they were heartbroken because of Lazarus. Some of them was weeping just because they saw Mary weeping. And they were heartbroken because she was heartbroken. That's what a true friend is. But it's what a true Christian does. 
When one Christian is heartbroken, one's weeping, one's going through a trouble, we all go through that, okay? We all go through that trouble. We weep with them. We're supposed to. If they mourn, we mourn with them. When they rejoice, then we rejoice with them. But it said that, that Jesus saw them weeping, and he groaned in the Spirit and was troubled. Can you imagine Jesus groaning because he was looking around? And he saw Mary weeping. He saw Martha weeping. He saw the other Jews weeping. And he got troubled in the spirit. And verse 35 said, Jesus wept. Did Jesus weep because Lazarus was dead? Mm, I don't think so. He no doubt weeped a little bit because that Mary was weeping. He was heartbroken with her. But I think Jesus was weeping a great deal because... He saw their unbelief. He saw that even though they had trusted him and they were still trusting him, they didn't really have the faith at that time to believe that Jesus would raise Lazarus from the dead. That's why Jesus came. He told them, he, he said, it's for your sakes that I didn't show up. He said, if I had showed up, I would have healed Lazarus. Lazarus would be with you. Lazarus would be alive. But that's all you'd know that I could do. You'd know that I could heal, but that would be it. He said, I want you to know I can do more than just heal. I want you to know I can go abundant beyond that. He said, I can raise the dead. Oh, isn't that amazing today that Jesus can raise the dead? The Bible tells me in the last day, the trumpet of God is going to sound. And when that trumpet sounds and Jesus speaks and he says, come forth. You know, we read here on, on down just a little bit that Jesus told him to take away the stone. And then he looked over into the grave. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, you're dead. But this is Jesus speaking. This is the resurrection and the life that's speaking. I'm the one that holds the keys to death and to hell. I'm speaking. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And immediately, Lazarus raised up from the dead and came to the place to where Jesus was at. I'm glad that whenever we, church, hear the trumpet of God sound and Jesus says come forth come on home it's time the dead in Christ are going to rise up we that are alive I'm talking about the ones that are alive in Jesus Christ we're going to raise up and we're going to go to meet the Lord in the air where we're going to be with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Jesus said, He that lives and believeth in me shall never die. I'm going to live eternally. Church, I might close my eyes down here for a while. I don't know. I may be, and I believe we're going to be, one that's going to just see him split the eastern sky. And step out on the clouds. I believe we'll be them that the dead's going to rise up. And then we're going to go up with them. To be, meet the Lord. And to be with the Lord throughout all of eternity. I hope you're ready to go today. And if you're not. Jesus proved this right here. When he raised Lazarus. Jesus didn't come just to heal. He loved Mary. He loved Martha. He loved Lazarus. But the persons he loved, people, I should say, that he loved the most, I believe, is the ones that's lost. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came to seek 
and to save that which was lost. That is the greatest love he has is for the lost. So if you're lost today, would you come to Jesus as we pray? Amen. Father, we're thankful to you once again today for Jesus Christ. We thank you for salvation. And we pray, God, that you would deal with the hearts of them that are lost. We we'll pray, God, that you would speak to them that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior today. And I pray, God, they would open up their heart and ask Jesus to come in. Now, Lord, we ask you once again, bless the preaching service this morning. Bless Brother Jimmy with the words to speak that souls would be saved in the church today. The kingdom of heaven would be blessed. God will give you praise, for we do ask it once again in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.